In this lecture, we are going to use the Docker volume that we understood in our last lecture. So in order for using the Docker volume, we are going to be using another Docker image, which is nothing but the SQL Server Docker image. And then we run them as a container and we are going to point the SQL Server data into the volume. And then we will see how the data is going to be persisted into the Docker volume even after you delete the Docker container and then create a new one and use it from there. So let's see everything in action in this particular lecture. So in order to work with Docker volume, I'm going to download a Docker image from the Docker Hub, which is nothing but the SQL Server image from the Docker Hub. And it's going to be the Microsoft SQL Server. And it's an Ubuntu-based image. It's not the Windows container, but I'm going to be using the Linux container this time. And almost all the time in this course, because we're not going to worry about the Windows containers kind of thing. So you can see that this is the Microsoft SQL Server running inside the Ubuntu-based image. And it's a verified publisher image, so you can just straight away use that from here. And the command to use or run the particular container is this one, as you can see. It's a docker run hyphen e, which is nothing but the environment variable that you're going to pass, where you're just going to say accept eula is equal to y. And then you're again passing one more environment variable where you're going to say ms sql sa password so you need to have an sa password as you know which is going to be a strong password that you're going to be entering and then you also need to pass an environment variable where you're going to be setting the msql pid as evaluation i guess this is a preview version that's the reason why you have to set this evaluation but if you're not going to be using the evaluation version then you can just use the one with a full version i guess there is a latest version as well that you can use along with this particular sql server so there is this tag called as 2022 latest so you can straight away use that without any problems that's the tag as you can see it's been mentioned over here so we can probably use that as well so that you don't really have to mention the ms sql pid for your use over here so we have got all this information over here and you can see that it's also exposing a port number so if i just go back over here you can also see that it's exposing a port number of 1433 uh, to the 1433 which is the default port which is used by sql server to be used within our host machine. So if you're gonna be accessing the SQL server from the container, from your host, you should be using this particular port number. That's why you have this hyphen P over here. And it's giving you the name of the SQL server as a SQL server preview. And there's a host name as well being set over here. And there is this hyphen D in a detached mode. You remember in our last lecture, we were using the IT for interactive mode. Similarly, we can use hyphen D for detached mode. And we'll talk about these things in our next lecture. But for now, just remember, this is how things are going to be done. And then you're going to pass the mcr.microsoft.com. So this is the place where the SQL Server really exists. So that's the registry which has been used over here. And you can be downloading things. So that is the artifact link. So I'm going to be doing the exact same thing this time. So what I have did is instead of just copying this entire thing over here, I've just modified this strong password so that I can access it from my Visual Studio and I can show it to you. And also I'm not using the preview version. So I'm just gonna go over here. Let me clear this entire screen. I'm gonna paste this particular command. So you can see that the command looks exactly the same. Docker run hyphen E for the accept EULA as Y. And I'm setting the password here. Oops, sorry, I just hit that wrongly. Uh, and also I'm setting the port number as 1433 and a detached mode. This is where I'm running this particular image. I know this particular image doesn't exist. So if I hit enter, you will notice that it is going to download the image for me. And I'm also running this particular container over here, right? So it is going to download the image for me and it is going to run the image as a container, as a detached mode within my Docker. So that is what is going to happen once the downloading is done. And you can see that the image has been downloaded and it is also running as a container. That's the status that you are getting it over here. So that's the way that you can see it. So you could, if you just do a docker ps hyphen a, you will notice that this particular container is running over here. That's the starting of this particular container name. As you can see, that's what is the container ID that you are getting it. 
which means the container is now running. So if I just go to the Docker desktop over here, and if I go to the volumes, you will see that there is no volumes being created. And the reason why there is no volume is because this particular container doesn't have any of the volume within the SQL server. So if I just wanted to connect this particular SQL server, I'm just gonna go open a Visual Studio code, grab the connection string to connect to the SQL server. So I'm just gonna go to the SQL server plugin. So I have already installed a SQL server extension within my machine. And I have connected over here with the local SQL server. If I try to connect it, ah, there we go, it's not working. So let me uh, remove it and try to add a new connection. So I'm gonna give the SQL server name. I think the SQL server name was a local host. And I'm gonna give the database name as optional. And then there is this uh, password, which I need to give, which is SA. And the password was a strong password that I gave, which is this one. So I'm gonna copy this password. And if I paste this password, and if I hit enter and save the password, and if I hit enter, you see that it is gonna be connecting to the SQL server right now. So if I'm gonna enable the trust certificate, you will notice that the SQL server is now connected for me over here. And there is this system database of master model and MSDB and temp database. So every single time when I try accessing the SQL server, you should see the logs of the SQL server coming up for me over here as well. So let's say if I'm gonna create a database over here. So if I just right click and create a new query and I'm gonna say create database and the database name is going to be, uh, let's say employee, something like this. And if I hit execute, you will notice that it is gonna create an employees database for me over here. So let me try to refresh this database and you should see that it's an employees database. Now I can also create some tables within this particular database. So I can say create table address uh, and then I'm going to add some details here, something like the address ID, which is gonna be of an integer. Um, and then I'm gonna say city as war car, something like that. So I know this is not a great example, but I'm just gonna create the table over here. Uh, and you should see there is gonna be a table created as address, right? So it's all created over here in this particular container. And now let's say if I wanted to delete this particular container, if I just go back to the container, and let's say if I remove this particular container forever, and if I try to spin up this container once again, so if I just spin up this container, so you will see that there is a new container ID being created. And if I go connect this particular local server database once again, so let's say disconnect, and if I wanted to connect it over here, you will notice that there is no employee database because all the data which the SQL server had were all gone because there is no volume and it is not persistent right now. That's the reason why we need to have volumes within our database. So in order to have the volumes over here, all I'm gonna do it is I'm going to stop the container. So let's say, let me clear the screen and I'm going to remove the container. So I'm gonna say docker stop and the container name. So for that, I'm gonna say docker ps-a and then docker stop a3c, that's gonna stop. And then I'm also going to remove the container. So I'm gonna say a3c, that's gonna remove it for me. And if I just do a docker ps-a, you see that the container is completely removed. And now I'm going to run this entire container that I was trying to run even before. But just that this time, I'm gonna use one more flag here as hyphen V. This is for the volume that we are trying to create. And I'm gonna give a name for this particular volume. Guess what? I'm gonna use the name of the volume that we just created in our last lecture. It is nothing but the test volume if I wanted to use it. So I can just say test volume. So volume as test volume. And I need to point this to colon slash var slash opt slash ms sql so basically this is the path where sql server is going to store all the data folder 
which is the SQL Server's data, which could be a log file. It could, it is nothing but the databases that you are creating. Everything is going to be stored into this particular directory. That is what I wanted to point or store all the SQL Server data into this particular test volume so that even if the container is gone, I wanted to have or persist the data into this particular volume. So let's see how that actually works. So I have executed it this time. And now hopefully if I disconnect the database and if I try to connect it, you should see that there is going to be a database coming up for me. Just got all these informations over here. And most importantly, even before I begin it, if I just go to the Docker volumes this time, and you see that the status this time is going to be in use, which means somebody is using it. So if I go here, you see that there is a data inside this particular volume that has been used by this container. And we have got all the data over here. Look at that, the master database, the temp database, and also all the models database over here. So it's all sitting, the data folder uh, also has got the logs. It also has got the secrets and some information which we really need. So once we have all this, which means something's been storing into this particular volume, right? The SQL Server container is storing into this particular volume. And now we can also go to this particular database over here, um, the SQL Server. I'm going to create the employee database and I'm also going to create the address. So I'm going to go probably refresh and I'm going to go to the database. We have the employee. I'm going to create a table as address within this particular employee database, right? Which means it's there right now. And now if I try to remove the containers, I'm going to go into the Docker desktop itself and I'm going to delete it forever. You still see that we have got the volume, even though it is not in use, it still has got the employees MDF, which I just created like 40 seconds ago, which means the data still persists over here. And that is the power of the volume itself. The volumes always exist independently, regardless of the container. Now, if you're going to be bringing up this particular container back to life, you can just use the same exact data if you wanted to. So if you just go and run this particular command once again, by pointing it to the same volume, if I hit run it, and now if I just go back, maybe I just disconnect it this time and try to connect it once again. You see that we have got the database and we also have got the employees database and the table as address there. This is all coming because it's all persistent this time. That's the power of volume, guys. I mean, it is going to make our life more simpler. It's going to persist the data for us. And we can use this scenario even further while we use this in microservice architecture and also where the data is going to be saved and stored. You can also store the log files. You can also store all the information that you wanted to use within a container and export it into your host machine using the Docker volumes. And guess what? Now if I just go back to this particular test volume and if I try to refresh this particular window, you see that we have got all the different folders that we just are seeing into the Docker desktop. Now you can also take a backup of this particular data folder if you wanted to. So if you just go to the volumes and take a backup of this particular directory, you can always restore it back every single time, even if the entire container goes down, because you can now do a backup of this particular folder, right? That is the power of the volume. So it's always persistent. You can always do a backup. It is secured. It is faster and it's more faster than bind mount. And we have not spoke about bind mount yet, but still it is much better than bind mount. And while we speak speak about bind mount, you'll understand what bind mount is, but volumes are better than bind mount just in case to understand.